Hello guys, Stone here. As you already know, the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 is out and the successor of the LG V10 will be out in September. So what better time to buy the last year flagships? LG V10 or the Note 5? Which one is better? Let's find out. There we have you guys, the Note 5, the golden version and the LG V10, the beige version, which to me more is more like cashmere one with brass elements over here but anyway that's Korea exclusive so it's very hard to find this one I'm really not sure if it's exclusive I think it's, it's available all over the place so you can get it easily but it's my favorite gold option because at night time or like now afternoon it's kind of golden but if you take it out and the sunlight is very bright it's more like silver one but that's just just my preference you might like the other colors anyway um let me just quickly compare the design of those two phones they're both amazing to feel in the hand <laughs> to hold in hand um, samsung uses glass on glass where lg uses something like a dura skin which is uh, well plastic and rubber something like that stainless steel sides and double protection on the front you've got gorilla glass 4 plus another lg's version of the of this protection on top of it so in terms of durability i would easily give the win to the v10 simply because the stainless steel over here and samsung is you know infamous of their very expensive screen replacement parts as well as it's very easy to crack the back over here well, it's a little bit cheaper to replace, but it's very hard because you gotta use a heat gun. But anyway, now in terms of size, as you can see, both phones are having 5.7 inches very big screens. The V10 is a little bit wider and a little bit taller because it has a second screen, but we're gonna go back to that in a second. Now, in terms of feel in the hand, both phones, as I said, are really nicely feeling in the hand. Um, the Note 5 has a very very slim bezel over here, almost non-existent where the V10 has a little bit more bezel and, um, and the stainless steel sides but overall I would say that the V10 is a little bit more comfortable simply because this material over here doesn't slip from your hand whatever, no matter what you do where the Note 5 is very very easy to drop because of this, you know, glass back cover, which is very slippery and is a fingerprint magnet all the time. Now, when it comes to fingerprint readers, uh, I would say that they're more or less the same in terms of accuracy and speed. But in terms of placement, you've got the fingerprint over here on the Note 5, which you can check it out. It's fairly quick and it's fairly accurate as well. On the V10, you've got it at the back now as you can see it's, it's fairly quick as well it's not the best one but this one is not the best one as well uh, the one thing that I don't like about both of these fingerprint scanners are that they're not always listening like the Nexus like the Huawei like the OnePlus like the bunch of these uh, of other devices you have to press the button and then to lock and here as well you gotta press the button to unlock which is not a big deal but Anyway, I just had to mention that. Now, in terms of um, in terms of screens, we've got IPS Quantum Dot LCD screen on the LG V10, and we've got Super AMOLED Samsung screen on the Note 5. Now, although the V10 screen is a really good LCD screen, I'll take the Note 5's Super AMOLED anytime simply because the sunlight readability or visibility however you prefer to call it is night and day i mean with the note 5 i've never ever had problems you just slide it to maximum brightness and you're good to go with the v10 even if, if, if you slide it to the maximum brightness sometimes if it's very bright you're definitely going to struggle plus your phone hits up fairly quickly but that's that's another thing which i'm going to talk about in the performance uh, part in just a minute now let me let me just sh actually show you quickly about the screens now I've got both of the screens on 50% uh, here 
and probably 30% over here. As I said before, the Samsung screen tends to be quite a lot more bright than the V10. And um, there's another thing in the settings menu over here, you've got totally no option for changing the color temperature. Where well, over here, you've got this option. You can change your color temperature, you can change photo mode or whatever it is, Super AMOLED, Cinema mode, which changes the color temperature a little bit. Um, so, thumbs up. Basically, I mean, I have to give the win to the Note 5 this time in terms of screen. Now, in terms of um, what else? In terms of interface, and we, we've got the LG UX or something like that, and we've got the infamous statues of Samsung, I would say that both have their unique features built in. But one thing I've noticed is that the DPI, not the PPI, because the PPI is the same, but the DPI of the screen, the density of the icons is a little bit different. As you can see on the V10, they're a little bit too big, at least to my taste. And over here on the Samsung, they're just about right, at least in my opinion. Now you can always flash, uh, flash. I mean, you can always install no, install Nova Launch or something like that and play around with the settings. However, on the V10, if you change the DPI in the system, if you have root, of course, that's gonna screw up your phone and you're gonna get get a boot loop simply because you're messing up with the second screen as well, which I really love to be honest with you. As you can see, my channel name over here. That's a really good and effective feature of the V10. The second screen shows you notifications. You can pick up a call from over here. Some people complain that there is a light bleed from over here, the left corner. I had another V10 before with a serious light bleed over here, but this one doesn't have light bleed. So I guess it's more like a manufacturing fault or something like that. However, the Note 5 has one advantage over the V10 as well. And that's the S Pen. I'm gonna show you just in a sec. You press it like that and you take an off-screen note, which is really nice. The other thing which I use the S Pen for is when I play a game, for example, which one? This one, Skyforce Reloaded. I can, you know, I can control my plane without having to swipe with my finger but with the S Pen. Now, I've asked one question about the button of the S Pen over the Google Plus community, uh, and they were, they were about to destroy me because I said that the button is useless. And what I mean by useless, I mean, when you're close to the screen, you can press the button. Let me check. Yeah, you can press the button to do nothing, basically. So I'm really not sure. Oh yeah, check this out. You can press the button to bring up this air command instead of just pressing it over here. It doesn't make sense to me. And the other thing is just to copy text like that, which is ridiculous. So the only useful feature of this button is when you double tap to any screen, it brings you the note. So that's about it. If that button was programmable, you can launch whatever you like with pressing the button. I will be more than satisfied, but unfortunately it isn't. And one more thing, be careful not, not to put this one like that because you're gonna break it. So always put it like that. You gotta remember that. So in terms of additional features, you've got the second screen here, you've got the S Pen here, not overly you know, useful, you can live without them, but it's nice that you have them. Now, in terms of basic operational system and skin, if you like, I will give it to the Note 5, simply because both phones uh, support Teams as well, but Teams, in the case of the LG, change icons and wallpaper, and they don't change this layout and the settings menu as well. On the Galaxy, as you can see, I've changed mine to dark one to save a little bit of a battery um, and it changes basically everything in your phone so that's why I like the interface more in the Note 5. Now when, when we talk about sound um, we've got bottom firing mono speaker on both phones and they are quite similar in terms of output. Um, 
let me quickly show you and play a song for you guys so you can see which one is better listen to um, which one listen to the v10 first and i'm gonna put the other one as well after that listen to that by the way maximum volume just to let you know yes maximum volume here check this out Now, check this out. Listen again. No five. Now, I'm not quite sure if you're going to be able to differentiate both phones. Um, from my camera but i'm gonna say this both phones are not very loud however the overall you know quality of the sound is a little bit better on the note 5 it's not great by any means but especially if you listen to let's say youtube videos the v10 speaker tends to be a little bit annoying when we come to a uh, voice and also singing so i would give the win to the note 5 this time now when we are at the audio section oh by the way the screens let me quickly show you how bright both of these screens can get and what's the difference i'm hoping that you can see over here we've got the really nice white levels on the note 5 and we have blue <laughs> screen on the v10 anyway let's go back to 50 percent for the sake of saving a little bit of battery and having a um anyway now uh going back to the sound section as i said before a little bit better loudspeaker on the note 5 when we come to the headphone output i would say that overall um the exynos chip provides better headphone output than most snapdragon 808 devices however i'm talking about the built-in duck because the lg v10 has an additional duck for high quality high bitrate uh, files so basically if you don't use the hi-fi duck the samsung galaxy note 5 has a better and louder and cleaner headphone output however if you plug in a pair of really nice headphones and you enable the duck in the settings you're gonna get better results on the v10 so in terms of headphone output i'm not gonna get into details over here you get a nice pair of headphones you're going to get a better sound from the v10 anytime now in terms of performance well we've got six core chip over here and we've got eight core chip over here the exynos is a lot more powerful than the v10 and i'm gonna show you i mean day-to-day -day tasks both phones are quite snappy as you can see um however when we talk about gaming there is a huge difference i'm talking about the following over here you've got game optimizer adjust video quality in games to save battery basically if you have this one off your performance will be totally unbearable when playing a game on the v10 and i guess that i can only assume that this option over here changes the resolution of the game to 1080p where on the samsung 
I'm not saying that the performance is bad. The performance is absolutely flawless in every single game. However, it gives you the option with the Game Tuner from the Galaxy App Store to download this application Game Tuner and to change the visual quality and the frame rates of every single game. So let's presume you install a very, very demanding game and you're not 100% happy with the performance. You can tweak it a little bit over here to get the best performance available. Now on the V10, that's not an option. The only option you've got is Game Optimizer. And if you have it on off, you, you, you will be very disappointed um, of the gaming performance. Now, let's do a very quick test with Mortal Kombat because that's one of the games that I play all the time. So let's see which one is going to load faster. And I'm going to show you what's the difference in the performance in one, two, three. I'm going to switch the LG V10 sound off because as I said most of the time it's annoying. Right. Let me centralize them over here. Oh yeah. Now in terms of blacks, <laughs> you've got really deep blacks over here. When over here the blacks are really not that good. Okay, Mortal Kombat has already loaded on the Exynos. Right. I'm gonna go to battle mode. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna just wait the V10 to load to show you guys something. Now, check this one up. When you scroll just over here in the game UI, you can see that it's kind of smooth over here. When you scroll over here, you can see that it's a little bit choppy. So let's go to battle mode. Let's go to the second tower. Let me change my team quickly. Right. Now, as you can see, the Note 5 loads much faster than the V10. And in terms of gay play, uh, you can see when this guy hits me, you can see the frame rate drops over here. Well, over here is absolutely flawless. Just have a look at the performance and tell me. I'm, I'm really not sure if it's gonna show on camera, simply because the frame rates for the video is 30, which I'm filming at the moment. And over here, you sh you're supposed to have 50 or 60, 60 frames per second. So let me just pause this one quickly and show you what am I talking about. When you press this button, and we have to apply the special attack, over here is absolutely flawless. Let me show you something else. Check this one out, how it's moving up and down. Absolutely flawless. Now, check this one out. Even if you press the button, you can see how it goes up and down, a little bit choppy. So, in terms of gaming performance, guys, I would really not recommend the V10. So, I have to give the win to the Note 5. Now, in terms of heating up, I really had a hard time making the Note 5 heat up. However, with extensive gaming, you can make it heat up just a little bit over here. But the V10... It's kind of, oh my god, it's already hot. Yeah, noticeably hotter than the Exynos. Now, the problem with the heat transfers to battery life as well. Both of these devices has 3000 mAh battery and, uh, you know, they're supposed to last more or less the same because they're running the newest Android version they, they have the same battery capacity, Their model, the, the screen size is the same, the screen resolution is the same. However, a big difference makes the chip. The Snapdragon 808 heats up 
all the time. And when your chip heats up, your battery drains quickly. Simple as that. I'm going to give you um, just a quick example. Uh, the screen on time that I'm getting on these phones is about 2 hours on screen time, 4G, Bluetooth, all the time, 2 hours on screen time. With the Note 5, with 4G all the time, with bad reception of course, and moving all the time, and, um, and uh, with Bluetooth all the time, I get in 3 hours, which is a huge difference because that's a 50% difference actually. If you use Wi-Fi only, I can easily get 6 hours on screen on time on the Note 5. Where the V10, I can't really get more than 3.5 hours of screen on time. Which is, which is really not enough guys. I mean, really not enough. Another example, the other day, I was on Skype. I've tested both phones. Both phones 100%. I was outside, it was sunny, it was hot. So both phones, Skype, let's say around 50% brightness on both screens. My battery went down to 20% on the V10 after only 40 minutes of Skype. And I had temperature warning over here on my screen, which means that the phone is overheated, which it can switch off and basically never switch on or go to a boot loop. The better option is to switch it off cool it down and then continue. Now, with the Samsung Galaxy Note 5, I've tested the very same thing after that, and I had one hour, 20 minutes of Skype when my battery went down to 20%. And the phone, of course, it was hot, but it was nowhere as hotter as the V10. So I'm really sorry, LG, I, I have no idea what you've done over here, but the battery life is absolutely ridiculous on the V10. And I'm really happy with the same battery capacity on the Note 5. Now, the other thing which I really want to finish with is the camera. We've got 5 megapixel cameras. You've got two cameras here. And you've got 16 megapixel cameras at the back. Now, I'm going to start with the front-facing camera. And I'm going to show you that I have did a quick, um, quick test over here with the camera. Let me show you. This ugly guy is me. <laughs> now, um, right. LG is advertising this camera, the right one or the left one, I, I really don't know, as a wide angle camera and the, and the other one, normal kind of angle camera. Samsung hasn't really said anything about the front-facing camera on their Note 5. But let me tell you something. That's the normal one here, both 5 megapixels. There's the normal camera here. There's the Samsung camera here. Now, as you can see, the angle on the Note 5 camera is somewhere between the normal angle on the V10 and the wide angle. Now, the problem with the wide angle is that we're losing out detail. Check this out. When I zoom in, I'm going to zoom in, let's say, my eye over here. As you can see, it's a little bit more detailed on the Note 5. If we compare the other photo, let's do the same thing over here. If we compare the other photo, the sharpness and everything is more or less the same. So basically, I wouldn't call that a gimmick, but I mean, what's the point of having wide angle camera when the resolution is the same? It could have made a difference if the wide angle was 8 megapixel, because on the LG G4, we had an amazing 8 megapixel camera, which I prefer <laughs> anytime compared to these two cameras. So basically, the, the picture quality is more or less the same. I've got a bunch of other photos over here. And something else, you've got a software trick on the Samsung camera, which can enable kind of wide angle photo over here. So that's wide angle with the V10, that's wide angle software trick on the Note 5. So, I mean, if you really want the wide angle, you can get it with the Note 5 as well. So I would say front-facing cameras die. Now, 
that's a low light by the way that's a low light and the results are similarly bad <laughs> now i can't really explain to you guys how similar these two cameras are they're both 16 by 9 format unlike the 4x3 format on the S7 so I would say that these are the top performing cameras at the moment beating basically everything now when it, when it comes to details as you can see the difference is is absolutely insignificant so I wouldn't I, would, I wouldn't pick a winner to be honest with you there's a slight difference in the processing of these images but let's go ahead and check this one out that that one looks a little bit more blueish because of the white point of the LCD and this one looks a little bit more warm because of the well the characteristics of the AMOLED screen um, so let me show you this picture as well as you can see the level of detail is absolutely amazing these are both taken in uh, out mode to be honest with you i can't really say again i'm saying i can't really say which one is better now over here you've got a little bit of, of a different color reproduction and everything else but again i'm really not sure which one i like more check this out beautiful both beautiful out mode check this one out absolutely beautiful let me show you the details over here absolutely beautiful now let me tell you something else you've got manual controls on the note 5 for pictures you've got manual controls on the v10 as well so in terms of manual controls i would say tie now let me quickly before we go to the video let me quickly show you the low light situation i'm really not quite happy with both photos to be honest with you because they have quite a different quite a different uh, setting although they're all in out mode you can see over here um that's a little bit too dark and and, and lacking color that's a little bit too yellowish when we, when we check this scene, I kind of like this one more. This one probably a little bit more, to be honest with you. Probably this one again. Now, check this photo up. This bin is green and over here it looks grey. I've made a manual photo over here just for the sake of tuning the image i've tried to tune the image exactly as that picture and check this out i had exactly the same result on the v10 so i would say that if you want to take low light photos overall the auto mode on the v10 is a little bit better although if you use the manual mode you can get exactly the same photo quality in low light for these two cameras so i would say that in terms of cameras they're absolutely 95 96 percent the same i'll take any of them anytime now in terms of video you've got manual controls on the video on the v10 which is a plus you don't have too much controls on the note 5 however there's there's a little bit of a difference of the stabilization let me play both these videos and see just to let you guys okay guys i'm making a video comparison between the samsung galaxy note 5 yeah and the lg v10 there we go auto settings on both devices watch it is short optical plus video stabilization is active at the moment on the v10 screen it looks better to be honest with you at the moment but i'm really not sure if that's uh, the actual processing happening in real time and samsung is gonna do the magic afterwards or let's see let's see how it goes 
I'm not gonna keep it very long though. It's just uh, a couple of levels. So uh, let's see. Let's see how we do. Oops. <laughs> that video is supposed to be very shaky because I'm going down the stairs and uh, I'm using a very special rig, by the way. They're mounted on the same one. It's called uh, Palms. <laughs> I'm literally holding both phones, okay, kind of together with both hands, but uh, still nothing special. So yeah, that's it. Let's see which one is better. And see you guys in a bit. Now, let me point out that both of these videos has been taken with both hardware plus software stabilization. So my overall opinion is that the V10 gets a little bit a, a better job at stabilizing the video itself, but therefore the video is a little bit choppy. Where over here the video is, is a little bit more shaky on the Note 5, but overall not that choppy. So I'm really not sure. I will probably take I will probably take the Note 5. But however, you've got a bunch of controls on the V10 for the video, so I would I would give it the win to the V10. So let's quickly wrap this video up, guys, because it's it's more than half an hour long. I'm sorry about that, but I but I felt that I have to give you as much information as I can for these two phones, so you can you can make up your mind. In terms of design and build quality, it depends what you're looking for. The V10 is a little bit easier to hold, and it's more grippy. It's heavier as well. This one is lighter. It's more sleek, but it's very slippery. So it's up to you in terms of design. In terms of fingerprint, this one is on the front, this one is at the back. Again, it's up to you, whatever you prefer. But to be honest with you, no matter which one you get, you're gonna get used to it anyway. Now, in terms of software, there is a slight win for the Note 5. Um, in terms of screen, there is a big win for the Note 5. In terms of loudspeaker, there's again a very small win to the Note 5. Really not, not very good speakers on both, but this one tends to be a little bit annoying if you crank the volume up. This one is fine, but again, not very good speakers. Now, in terms of headphone output, hands down for the LG, for the amazing duck that they've put in. If you have an expensive pair of headphones, that's, that's, that's the phone to get. In terms of battery life, a huge win for the Note 5. Night and day, the battery life of the V10, unfortunately, is ridiculous. In terms of camera, um, I would say that the still cameras on both phones are equally good. They're still the best cameras on the market, in my opinion. And uh, I, can't, I, can't, I can't choose a winner. They're the same for me. In terms of low light, for both phones, you gotta use the manual mode and you're gonna get the same results. In terms of, of video, the overall video quality of the Note 5 is just slightly, slightly, slightly better, at least in my opinion. However, you've got a bunch of manual controls for the V10, which makes it an automatic win for me. And finally, the price. Uh, both phones were quite expensive last year and today, <laughs> August 2016 you can get both half price that they used to be back in the day this one and this one in the UK now you can get both for about 350 pounds if you're lucky in the US I'm not quite sure but I can imagine that for about 400 bucks you can get both phones which is a steal compared to the new Note 7 which is 850 bucks so if you can get a Note 5 for 400 well, there's absolutely no reason to spend double for the Note 7 because it's, it's basically the same phone. Um, so there we have it, guys. Which one should you choose? It's up to you. I gave you the, the pros and the cons of both devices. Um, I really hope you enjoyed this very long video. Um, so if you like this video, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel because I've got a bunch of new and nice videos coming up. And uh, see you guys in the next video. Adiós.